of a saying. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna. Day after day, year after year, you find yourself addicted to the grind. You leave class every day slightly out of breath. You are truly pushing yourself to the limit of human endurance. You're gaining on your peers. Kind of. Just the other day, you almost caught Dave the geriatric brown belt in a sweep. Your library is filled to the brim with Dan Hurd's patented sleeping aids. You sleep very well. You feel like you're improving at BJJ, just not quickly, nor particularly steadily. But improvement is improvement. Yet somehow, despite the odds, perhaps because God is dead, you find yourself in the unenviable position of still sucking at jujitsu. Maybe in a decade, you'll finally be able to hang out with the local black belt scene at a Fuji tournament. You find yourself disappointed. Coincidentally, so does your girlfriend. You dream of one day being like Gordon Ryan. Why do you still suck at jiu-jitsu? Maybe if you just took more steroids. Perhaps if I show more right-wing media on Instagram, I will find my skills in jiu-jitsu improving. No? There must be a reason. Welcome to another episode of Andrew Wiltsey Tells You Obvious Shit. This episode, we're performing a deep dive into the realm of skill gain in BJJ and why you just can't manage it, as well as how to rectify some of these common mistakes. First, let's address some of the most glaring issues you have in BJJ. You aren't focused on getting better. You lack that Andrew Tate positive growth mindset. That's still a little vague, allow me to explain. You most likely see BJJ as this nebulous concept. Most people do. When you imagine yourself improving BJJ, your eyes gloss over like a cow chewing cud. You think about beating so-and-so or winning said tournament. You're focusing on the end result and not the incremental steps that get you there. BJJ at its core is nothing but a combination of moves and concepts that culminate into the whole that we call American Jiu Jitsu. You're busy trying to improve at BJJ as a whole instead of focusing on the individual aspects that make it up. To make it worse, you're doing it across the board without any specific focus. You're taking the scattershot approach when you should be focusing on specializing. Rather than improving on all areas at once, an idea that is guaranteed to keep your skill level in the mediocre realm, try narrowing your focus down. Pick two or three things that you find yourself interested in or you think are particularly effective. Maintain your focus until you've actually mastered these goddamn moves. Everyone wants to move on to something else before they've genuinely mastered the stuff that they should have been working on, resulting in them not being particularly good at anything. How long you need to focus on one thing can vary wildly. You, my ADHD riddled friend, might have gotten the short end of the stick. It might take you more than a month of grinding before you really feel like you're starting to get a particular move set down. And that's okay. Take all the time in the world. You're not racing anybody. Your peers, the average BJJ bro, show up to class, half-ass some techniques that their time-based black belt instructor randomly decided to shit out, and then spend the rolling portion just free rolling, completely unfocused. This is not the optimal way to improve at BJJ. You should be learning everything, but you should be specifically focusing your efforts in certain directions. I always pick things that I'm interested in or that I think are more effective than other moves. I'm not saying ignore your instructor's lessons, not by any means. However, there is a gigantic gap between knowledge and ability to perform said knowledge in our sport. Knowledge alone doesn't really mean anything because there's too many factors that go into making someone good at jiu-jitsu. Timing, tenacity, cardio, strength, flexibility, etc. all play an important factor in deciding who's going to win a particular match. It doesn't always come down to who knows more. You, being the gentleman with dreams of grandeur, need to be focusing on mastering the few moves that you do know in all of their different aspects. Know them in and out. Have multiple setups. Have failure models. Let's say you wanted to master close guard. You should watch close guard instructionals every day before leaving for the gym. You should show up early to drill close guard. Every round, you should find your way to close guard, trying to work another armbar setup. You are constantly trying to force your brain and body into accepting the fact that you will be a close guard master, goddammit. Because if you can't master that one position, how are you gonna master jujitsu as a whole? Now compare this mentality to how you probably go about stuff. Ask yourself, when was the last time I free rolled and really felt myself get better at a particular move set? The answer is very likely never, because free rolling is just not the optimal way to master individual move sets. It's the way to proof these move sets. Drilling is for improving at a given move set. Rolling is for proofing those moves. You should give zero fucks about who wins the round overall. The only thing that matters is did you improve on a given day? Within a week of focusing on close guard, you'll 
you'll find it easier to maintain the position. Within two weeks, you'll start to catch people. After a month, even the black belts are wary of entering your clothes guard. Rapid skill gain is about incrementally making improvements to specific areas. The shotgun approach is the absolute worst method for mastering jujitsu. Think of BJJ like a marathon, but a marathon you're sprinting from start to finish. No one's got time to wait around. We want to get good right now. If you want to win that coveted white belt world's title, you're going to need to be advancing as quickly as possible, but most importantly, consistently. Forget free rolling every day. Free rolling being the idea of just rolling to win the round, not really caring what happens as long as you get the victory. Free roll once a week. Spend the other rolling sessions hyper-focusing on the areas that you're trying to improve. Figure out ways to get into those positions more consistently. Develop tricks to strengthen your setups. Become the savant that everyone knows you can be. Then apply it to other areas of your game. Learning how to learn is the single most important thing that you can master. I happen to be on the slower end of the spectrum. It takes me about a month of working on something before I really start to feel like I've got it down. Drilling it daily on an unwilling bird. Subjecting my poor teammates to it every night. By the end of the month, I can earnestly say that I have two or three new moves that I'm genuinely good at. After a year of focusing on two or three things a month, that's 30 plus moves that you actually are good at. You can pull them off at a high level. This is how you go from being an average practitioner to a mat enforcer and then on to becoming a legend. Another thing you should be calibrating is how hard are you actually rolling? We've established that you should have direction in your rolling, but how much effort should I actually be putting in each round? We're just trying to learn, right? The thing is, most people have a habit of training too lightly. For various reasons that we're gonna go into, they just can't bring themselves to try as hard as they can in a round. You should be genuinely trying to win every single round, but win it in ways that you set for yourself. Victory via closed guard. That's not to say that you shouldn't accept free sweeps and submissions when they present themselves. You wanna be rounded still, and you don't wanna learn to ignore easy openings. You should just prioritize genuinely trying to pull off the move sets that you're working on in practice. The best way to really cement something in your head is to try your hardest to nail it. If you miss it, you now have realistic feedback on what you need to work on to improve. If you hit it while trying your hardest, you're conditioning yourself to perform the move that way, which happens to coincide with the move being the most effective. Things just work better when you try your hardest to pull them off. Effort matters and you should be utilizing it a lot more. Maybe you're down to put in effort, but you're still hesitating to execute your moves. You lack confidence. The lion from the Wizard of Oz was more willing to take risks than you. It's not your fault you're a coward. It's not really anyone else's fault either, but realistically, you're just timid and tend to not go for many moves in your matches because you know deep down it won't work, especially against higher level belts. Now it's time to find a heart, Mr. Lion, because we've got some asses to beat. I see it all the time when I'm visiting other schools. People get nervous, you know, probably at the ridiculous visage of my oversized calves, and they just don't think their moves will work on such magnificent specimens. And because they don't think the move will work, they end up either half-assing it or not going for it at all, leading to a self-fulfilling prophecy. This means I get a free match where the only thing I get to focus on is offense. Full-on buzzsaw, baby. My mentality is one of, fuck your guard and fuck your arm. I assume all of my moves are gonna work because I didn't do 10,000 reps only to fail to fucking go and pull the trigger after the fact. Hesitation is a form of disrespecting your opponent by not giving them the challenge that they rightfully deserve. I believe in the idea of respecting my opponent by absolutely beating their ass and crushing their confidence. And I could give a flying fuck what belt you are, everyone can get it. I've had that idea since I was a white belt, and as a white belt, I used to tap out black belts. I would flying armbar them, and they just didn't know what to deal with that sheer level of aggression. Everyone gets treated the same. No one is immune to the one-arm choke slipping in as I start to whisper sweet nothings into your ear. Nothing about belts or accolades render you immune to simple setups and execution. In fact, some of my hardest matches are from lower belts that have genuinely no idea who I am, so they're just trying their hardest to tap out the local black belt that's visiting. These are my favorite matches because it means my opponent has a glimmer of hope, and we all know that without hope, there cannot be despair. Stop over-respecting your opponents and undervaluing your own ability. 
you're only holding yourself back. Perhaps, like the sad office workers of the world, you are afraid of failure. This is another super common mistake I see people make in the realm of jiu-jitsu, and it's one that actually gets worse the higher level you get. Contrary to popular belief, jiu-jitsu is not an ego-free sport. If anything, I think BJJ allows you to develop a super ego because of the nature of grappling and how consistently you can beat some ass. These athletes become so obsessed with maintaining the fragile image that they have in their head that they don't realize how much it's holding their game back. They won't experiment with new positions or moves because if they do, their class rival Jimmy might tap them out. Jimmy already has an ego the size of a fucking planet, we can't let it get any bigger. Fuck Jimmy and fuck caring about what other people think in a training setting. We're all here to get better. Comparing yourself to other people to the extent that you actually care whether or not you win the match is just holding yourself back. And I mean absolutely no disrespect to the Jimmys of the world when I say this, but most people fucking suck at jiu-jitsu. That's the whole point of the video. You want to be training to beat guys that are significantly better than Jimmy. The correct perspective here is to not care about the skill level of your class rival or the opponent that you're rolling with in the gym, but instead to imagine that they were the perfect opponent. They make very few mistakes without you forcing them to make them, and they capitalize on every positional flaw that you expose. How would you beat that opponent? That's who you should be training for. Because at the end of the day, nothing you do in a gym setting matters. You're all training to win the worlds or whatever goal you set for yourself. That goal should not be to beat up your rival. It should be beyond that. It should be bigger than that. Training is training. It's for you to try new things and plug holes in your game. Something all pros have in common is that they never stop looking for areas to improve. And to improve, you have to expose yourself to flaws in your game. And that might get you punished. And that's okay. Within a year, you want to be able to walk into any gym in the world and feel confident that you can absolutely beat every ass in that room. Ego leads to stagnation, and stagnation leads to the death of skill gain. Maybe you're just comfortable with how things are. You do all right in class, you roll with the same few people every session and you go for the same moves over and over again. The guys you struggled with in the past are still giving you problems. This is when you need to shake things up and try visiting new gyms or competing. Rolling with the same few individuals over and over again can lead to them developing their game around yours in a way that prevents you from getting realistic feedback on how your game would do in a neutral setting. Visiting another gym can be a fantastic way to gauge how your A-game is going to do against people that haven't been exposed to it on repeat. In the same vein, competition can really open your eyes to how vast the ocean actually is. You'll never find an opponent more willing to expose your mistakes than one that is absolutely and earnestly trying to beat your ass. Use those lessons and find ways to either analyze your failures and push your game forward, or see where you're doing things correctly. Some of my biggest epiphanies came from running into problems in tournaments where I didn't know what to deal with a specific guard or a certain situation, so then I buckled down and I made it my focus for a month and some of my best material came about that way. Don't settle for being the big fish in the pond. As much as it pains me to say this, and it pains me quite a bit, you want to be the shark in the ocean. <sighs> Maybe you're holding back in your offense because you're not confident in your technical knowledge. Is my hand really supposed to go here and not slightly over there? Is this counter really what I'm supposed to be going for right now? That doubt is the enemy. Confidence is key to pulling off moves against high-level opponents. You can't do anything to a high-level guy without committing to it 100%. And if you even slightly doubt your own technique, there's just no way you're going to commit to it with the level of certainty that you need to hit it against a pro. You should be able to tell me what move to go for for, why you're going for said move, and exactly, to a T, how to pull that move off, following through by giving counters for what to do when they start to stop your game. Your goal should be to eliminate the need for thought in a match, because you did all your thinking and planning ahead of time, like a genius. A very stable genius. You have your details completely ironed out. You have the routes you want to go completely mapped out. Having an arsenal of little details can completely change how you approach a move entirely. But they can also allow you to approach a move with a higher level of confidence. Because you have it figured out to a level of detail that might make Danaher's weird ass even smile. 
And if you find yourself missing a move that you genuinely understand, you should be able to look back and analyze why you missed that move because you genuinely know how it's supposed to work. Now you can prevent it from happening in the future. You're plugging holes in your game. This is how you overcome an opponent through a sheer knowledge gap. You know exactly what to do in any given situation. Everything is a trap when you have enough systems mapped out. Now, it's true that some pros get by without being the most technically gifted of individuals. You know, some could say they rely on sheer performance enhancing athleticism to carry the day. I have found, however, that the majority of high level players just have more details to show from the areas that they actually execute than the average person, resulting in them performing above expectation time and time again. This is something you should aspire to. And the fact of the matter is, you are in charge of your own skill game, not your coach, not Danaher. Finding the knowledge is your responsibility. If you don't know what to do in a situation, look it up, ask around, ask your coach, try to go to YouTube, try to look up instructionals. But most importantly, go into the situation and troubleshoot yourself. What if I put my hand here instead? How does my opponent react? Where can I maximize my leverage? If I wanted to bait my opponent into placing his hand here, how would I go about doing so? Start to build your own systems. Don't ignore the pre-made systems out there though. Not everything needs to be reinventing the wheel. However, for you to really master your own game, you're going to want to tailor your moves to yourself as much as possible. What works for your body type and style preference? A system you develop piece by piece is a system you can now execute with perfect confidence. Start experimenting with developing your own techniques and systems. Watch how quickly your confidence goes to the roof and by extension, your skill. Maybe you know exactly what you're supposed to do, but you have the mental acuity of an actual sloth and you just can't manage to execute it fast enough. Your experience performance issues, specifically timing. One aspect of this we already covered, which is knowing exactly what to do. That can cut down on reaction time by a wild margin. However, there's plenty we can still do to increase our speed in BJJ. This is perhaps the easiest thing in the world to remedy. The answer is very simple. Drill. Somewhere Kit Dale just felt a shudder go down his weird fucking spine. Your goal is to drill your movesets until the point where you no longer consciously think about executing those moves. You are death, the destroyer of egos, the terminator in human form, a living machine on the mats. Someone whose existence is flawlessly executing a series of inputs and outputs until victory or death. But Kit Dale said drilling is stupid. Kit Dale's kind of a moron. If you genuinely think that you won't get better at performing a move by practicing a move, I have a bridge to sell you. You are delusional. There are plenty of drilling methods to fill various holes in your game. Reflex drilling is one of them, where you and a partner go into a position of choice. You ask your opponent to give you generic resistance, but at some point to make a specific opening available for you. That opening should be for the move you are trying to get better at hitting, and you can vary the amount of resistance that you get as you start to increase in skill and maintaining the position. Add more complexity to the system over time by having them create multiple openings for you, but make sure you start small. Incremental is the way. Now, mass rep drilling is fantastic for learning how to execute moves without any conscious thought because that's just how you do it. You just perform the move that way because you've done it so many times. I found that no one drills to the extent that they should really be drilling. Okay, it's just not as fun to do. People just like to come in and roll, and it's one of the big reasons why they still suck at jiu-jitsu. You should have a drilling to rolling ratio that favors drilling. Drilling is for improving. Rolling is for troubleshooting and proofing. Maybe you drill your moves to the death, but you find that when your opponents are really resisting, you kind of want to give up. You are a pathetic sack of shit. <laughs> your mental toughness leaves a lot to be desired. This can be a tricky thing to remedy. It ain't easy to fix being bitch made. Luckily, there are many proven methods to correct for said bitch assness. Nothing is ever free against a high level opponent. They make you work so much harder for even the tiniest of gains. First, your mindset overall needs fixed. Instead of looking for easier routes, you need to learn how to really stick to a move and grind it through to completion. You should be constantly trying to push yourself in everything that you do. Have an exercise where you want to do as many sprawls as you can in 30 seconds? Try to go for one or two more each time you do it. Every rep you execute should be better than the one before it. Every failure should be analyzed to death. You want to learn to give nothing up while constantly looking for areas to improve. You are in a constant war to the death against the only opponent worthy of your attention, yourself. If you find yourself struggling to hold a particular position or nail a certain move, activate your inner perfectionist and grind that move to the death. 
until you can feel maximum confidence that you can execute said position flawlessly. A drill that helps with this is the touch and go game. Not that, you sick fucks. The drill works like this. You tell your opponents that the moment you enter a position or lock your arms up, they are to provide hellfire levels of resistance and force you to maintain the position at all costs against a highly resisting opponent. Scale this resistance up to the level of perfection that you require. If you suck at a position, go slower at the start. They don't have to try their hardest to push you off because you're bad at it. You're trying to get better. You have to tailor the resistance to your skill level. This is a fantastic way to make positional improvements and mental improvements for jujitsu because it really teaches you how to complete stuff and keep what you took. Maybe your mental game is as confident as a grandmaster in chess squaring off against a toddler or Donald Trump. Unwavering confidence. Maybe it's your body that betrays you. You know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Allow me to rant for a moment that this has been a giant rant. Somehow, some fucking way, BJJ as a sport has developed this toxic mindset that real technique doesn't involve the use of any strength or athleticism whatsoever. This idea was propagated in order to make BJJ more universally friendly and make particular people a lot more money. These people should be cursed to step on Legos every time they step out of bed. BJJ is entirely limited by your physical abilities. Strength, speed, flexibility, cardio, muscular endurance, the list goes on. You can't do it without having those. All of these areas dictate how well you're gonna be able to perform the knowledge that you work so hard to gain. A Kimura grip can utilize all the leverage in the world, but if the person doing the pushing is in fucking equivalent to a bag of wet noodles, that Kimura is just not gonna happen. You have to understand that your strength is a limiting factor on how well you can perform a technique. A move that calls for pushing a leg down when you just can't manage to move that beefy chunk of leg is a move you just can't perform. You'll have to abandon it for something less optimal. That is suboptimal. In that same vein, quite a few defenses require you to have a certain level of strength to resist what your opponent is doing. Lose that battle and suddenly your arm's getting pulled through in the most bullshit ways and you're getting snap triangle, despite you technically doing the proper defense. Here's an anecdote, okay? Every single high-level grappler that I have either sparred with or competed against has been stronger than fuck, boy. Every single one of them, even Mikey Musumeki. Now, I suspect that the fact that our sport has the steroid equivalent testing of the honor system might have something to do with that. No, I don't think Mikey's on steroids. I digress. Every single one of them is stronger than fuck. Strength clearly matters a lot, and if you aren't lifting weights in order to maximize every advantage that you can, you cannot tell me that you genuinely care about getting better at jiu-jitsu. And not only lifting. Stretching and flexibility are just as, if not more important than strength training. Flexibility is your ability to constantly hit the maximum leverage angles for any given situation. It expands your options by a significant amount. Getting pressured, that's no big deal. You just kick your leg up and over and you're good to go. You wanna hit that arm bar? Again, just kick your legs up and over. Flexibility is like rolling in easy mode. It allows you to more easily bear the brunt of their offense while simultaneously setting up your own. Stretching should be a huge priority if you take jiu-jitsu as seriously as you claim, which you most likely do if you're still watching this long-ass video. It doesn't take much. Half an hour sessions where you're stretching for at least 30 seconds minimum, but on average you should stretch for a minute plus per stretch, is enough to make a difference in one to two weeks. Don't stretch cold either. Make sure you're stretching when you're warm. I stretch after each training session, so when I get done doing my cardio, or I get done drilling, or I get done rolling, that's when I stretch. Now, it may take longer than a few weeks to hit true Gumby status, and that's okay. BJJ is a marathon. We want to be able to do the splits in one year, goddammit. It doesn't matter if I can do them now. I will eventually be able to do them. Flexibility not only makes every movement easier, it also allows me to conserve a ton of energy in a match because I'm constantly taking the most efficient route and using the most efficient angles to launch my offense and to deal with my opponent's offense. I find myself barely having to try to regard against most opponents because I'm flexible enough I can just bring my legs back into play whenever I want, and that makes me so much less tired. Speaking of cardio, you should be doing it. Cardio is so ridiculously important to the BJJ athlete that it's incredible how often it actually gets overlooked, probably because it sucks ginormous donkey balls to do. The average BJJ athlete simply refuses to engage in any exercise that would improve their cardio that's not rolling. Here's a newsflash. Most of you don't roll hard enough to get any meaningful 
you know, improvement to your cardiovascular system to begin with. And the people that are rolling that hard are constantly plagued by injuries. You want the vast majority of your physical conditioning to come from outside of the mats. That way, when you're on the mats, you can focus on the one thing that only mat time can give, your technique. Do your hill sprints. Do your frog jumps. Develop your aerobic system by jogging, biking, swimming, the list goes on. The idea is to constantly keep your heart rate high enough that you are getting taxed without it being overbearing to the point where you're gonna give up. Okay, you're trying to maintain a certain heart rate for a certain amount of time. To develop your anaerobic system, think about your sprint type exercises, like sprints and frog jumps. I create high intensity interval circuits that have me switching exercises every 30 seconds. That way I'm not experiencing extreme muscular fatigue while I'm trying to tax my cardiovascular system. Once you start focusing on these two systems, you'll see that your pace will just naturally increase in the jiu-jitsu setting. And this is a good thing. Whoever's pushing the pace is winning the match more often than not. Pushing the pace is a fantastic way to pressure your opponent, and an opponent that feels pressured is one we can beat. Another massive benefit to actually doing your cardio is that you won't be afraid of getting tired anymore. So many people have this massive anxiety over getting tired in their matches. This fear prevents them from taking positive action in the match that could realistically lead to the match ending earlier or them getting to positions where they don't have to exert as much energy as like mount. Fear of exhaustion will make you flat out just not even see opportunities that you would normally be able to see because your brain knows that it doesn't want to expend the energy. It's a precious resource after all. Think about the times where you were hesitating to do what you knew deep down was the right option at the time. Why didn't you go for it? More than likely, half the time is because you were just scared of using the energy and you were trying to wait for a better opportunity. Good opponents don't give you better opportunities. You need to create those opportunities and that comes from positive action, which takes energy to do. Cardio should never, ever be a limiting factor on your technique. These are just a few ways that people are consciously or unconsciously holding themselves back in jiu-jitsu. Take your training seriously in a way that very few people take anything seriously and you'll see the results for sure. If you're trying your hardest and you're doing it intelligently, it is impossible to suck forever. Now, if none of these pitfalls apply to you, feel free to leave a comment down below letting us know just how unique and special you are. Remember to like the video and subscribe to Wiltsy Brothers BJJ for more weirdo Wiltsy content if you haven't done so already. We have a Patreon account if you just have too much money and want to throw some towards the cause. Otherwise, we hope everyone has a fantastic day and remembers to eat their Panda Express. Bye, have a great time.